Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my current fabric collection. Okay, let's jump in. Okay guys, so if you watch a lot of my videos, you may have noticed that this is where I store my fabrics. It's this little set of shelves I got, similar to something you could find at Ikea. I can't remember exactly where I got mine, but it holds my fabrics nicely. The only thing I'll say is that they are exposed to the light, so that's not ideal, but I do try to make sure that this doesn't get a lot of direct light, and I do cover it up sometimes with a blanket or a heavier fabric if I know it's going to be a really sunny day but eventually I'll probably want to move these fabrics to a proper storage location where they can be fully enclosed and safe from the light because if you didn't know, sunlight can fade and bleach out your fabrics very, very quickly. It can happen um, more rapidly than you might expect. So let me zoom you in and show you a little bit more about each of these fabrics. Okay, so let's start up here. I do try to arrange my fabrics by color. So this is my brown and black section. At the top, I have this um, Bemberg rayon coat lining fabric that hopefully I'll be able to use for a project. I had bought it to line my green coat when I made it last year, but I ended up going in a different direction. Actually, this is the coat I'm talking of right here. This is a Blackbird Fabrics bamboo rib knit in this dark chocolatey color. I do plan, this has quite a bit of stretch and I think it would work really well for turtlenecks, tank tops. You could make a form-fitting dress out of this. There's lots of possibilities and it's got a really nice smooth soft feel against the body so I love that. This is a knit lining fabric. I can't remember exactly what I had bought this for but I think it'll be good to have a staple knit lining like this in my collection. This is a Mood Fabrics double knit. So it's got this beautiful brown color on one side and it's got this kind of pinky uh, salmon color on the other side. I've had this in my collection for quite a while. I don't know why I haven't used it yet, to be honest. Um, I think I don't love sewing with knits, but now that I have a serger, I think I might be a little bit more interested in making something out of this, but just not quite exactly sure what I want to do with this one. So this is a lightweight black rayon knit from Mood Fabrics. I used it to line this black rose dress, uh, but I still have a lot of it left, so I could use it to line another project. So this is a Mood Fabrics rayon in a kind of eclectic, colorful animal print, print pattern. It's got a lot of different elements here, like it almost reminds me of a zebra stripes or um, some other animal prints, and it's really pretty, but I don't think I'm really going to use it, so I think I'm actually going to declutter this one and try to sell it. This is a very special fabric to me. This is a silk rayon blend. I got it when I was vacationing in Italy two summers ago, and it was a really special trip for me. It was the only fabric I bought in Italy because the fabrics were quite expensive. I got it from a store in Rome. I had wanted to look at their silks, but I thought the silks were out of my price range, so this Rayon Silk Blend ended up being beautiful, and I do want to make this to use a skirt, but I just want to find a skirt pattern that I love first before I commit to cutting into this fabric, so I absolutely love this one. And last but not least, this is an African wax printed cotton fabric. It has pink and red flowers, as you can see. I bought this for a specific video idea. I'm not sure if I'm going to go ahead and make the video, so I will hold on to this for a little bit longer, but if I haven't used it in the next little while, then I will just um, try to sell it or declutter it. Also, if you're liking the content on my channel, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so now let's go through this section which has some of my blue or bluey greeny fabrics, but I do have some others in other sections as well. So how I fold a lot of my fabrics, not all of them, but for some of these fabrics, I fold them around these pieces of kind of cardboard, and these are for comic books originally, and because of that, the paper is acid-free, so it won't damage your fabrics. And I cut mine down to size to kind of fit nicely in my storage container, and I tend to kind of fold my fabrics around these boards so that they stay organized. Okay, at the top here, I have this really pretty kind of tealy, light bluey green fabric. I got this out of Fabric Swap. I'm not exactly sure what the composition is, but looking at it, I would expect it's a polyester cotton blend, and it's got a really loose, pretty weave to it, so I think this would make a beautiful, like, summery blouse. I thrifted this at a thrift store. It's actually 
um, a dress and it's in this kind of soft jersey fabric it's really really stretchy and I was thinking of doing a thrift flip with this fabric but I'm not 100% sure so I'll hold on to it for a little bit longer but not absolutely in love with this one. This is one of the Blackbird Fabrics matte activewear knits. It's in this kind of dark green teal color and I really like these fabrics for making leggings and activewear so happy to have this for the next time I have the urge to make some activewear. So this is some blue linen and it's from fabricstore.com. It's in the shade Moises or Moises, I'm not sure. Um, I have quite a bit of this, so this is destined to become a summer dress. And one of my goals this year is to use up some of the linen in my stash because I do have a lot of linen and a lot of linen scraps as well. But I love this kind of medium blue color for summer. This is a scrap of linen that I got from fabricstore.com. It's in this like denim blue gray color. I used this to make a pair of shorts, but truthfully, I didn't really love working with this linen. It's got a much rougher texture and looser weave than a lot of their other linens. It's got a lot of imperfections on it, and I think it's just too heavy of a weight for me. So I think I'm going to take this out of my collection and put it in my scrap bins because I could see myself using this for scraps in a project, but there's not a lot of it left either. It's kind of just a remnant at this point. Okay, so this is some Atelier Brunette Viscose, and this is such a beautiful fabric. I love the look of it, but I've struggled to think of what I would want to make from it that I would actually wear. Originally, I was thinking a skirt or a blouse, but I think that might end up being a little bit too dressy. So I'm looking for something with a bit more of a casual cut that I could use this fabric for, but I really love this fabric, and I'm hoping I'll get around to using it this year. So this is some viscose crepe in the shade Lagoon from Blackbird Fabrics. I got it a while ago and this was pretty affordable. So I think I'm going to, to test this. I think I'm going to use this almost like a tester fabric. So if I need to make a mock-up of a skirt or something, I think I'll use this fabric to kind of test the pattern out. So happy to have this one. And last but not least in this section is this blue boiled wool fabric from Mood Fabrics. It's actually a mix, mix of viscose and wool. Um, I don't love this color anymore. I don't love this fabric anymore. I've hung on to it because it was quite expensive and I was trying to think of what I could possibly make with the scraps. I might have to do some research to see what I could use this for, but there's not a whole lot left. So. Not thrilled about this one. There's kind of some bad memories attached because I, I used it to make a sweater project that was kind of a fail, but yeah, holding on to this one for now. Okay, so this fabric is a black faux silk. It's made of polyester. I got it from Fabricland and they describe it as their antique satin and it has a really nice lightweight supple finish. It just has the most beautiful drape and it has a really interesting finish to the front of it. It really does look a little bit worn and I fell in love with this so I'm going to use this to make a black satin bias cut skirt. So that's something I'm hoping to work on soon. This is really heavy. I have this um, coating fabric I got from Fabricland. It's a wool polyester mix. It's got a houndstooth pattern with cream and tan and I really love the finish of it. I've got four meters of this and I bought it on sale. So the next coat project I do will definitely be this, but I probably won't get around to making that coat until next fall. And to go with that, I bought this um, Kasha lining fabric. So on one side, it's this faux silk and on the other side, it's got brushed cotton. So this will be my lining to go with the coating fabric here. Next up, I've had this beautiful fabric in my stash for a long time and I finally know what I want to do with it. This spring I'm going to use this to make a cutout dress. I think it'll be really nice for that. It's a cotton poplin with a little bit of stretch. It's got great structure, not a lot of drapes. So looking forward to making something like this and I have quite a bit of this. I think I have at least four meters. And this fabric was a gift from my mom, so it's really special to me and I'm excited to finally use it to make something. All right, so this is just some swim lining. It's a power mesh, it's in my nude color, so I'm going to use this to line the bathing suits that I make this spring and summer. This is one of my favorite fabrics. It's a polyester chiffon with this beautiful floral print. It's got some sparkles on it. I adore this. I'm still not sure exactly what I want to use this for, but I'm so happy to have this one in my stash and hoping I can use it for something soon. This is a cotton kind of loosely woven lacy fabric. 
And I used this to make my wrap cardigan I featured on my channel last year. There's a little bit of it left and I love this fabric, so I think I'm gonna try to use this to make something beachy and summery this year, maybe a beach cover-up or something like that. Um, really, really love this one. And last in this category, this is some bull denim fabric. It's 12 ounces. I got this several years ago when I started sewing. I got a bunch all at once and I've slowly been working my way through all the bull denim I have. So I'm really happy to have these beautiful denims and I know they're sitting around here for the next time I'm inspired to make jeans or jean shorts. All right, next let's focus in here. Honestly, I've kind of been throwing a lot of random things in here, so this is a good opportunity to organize this section. But right at the top, you can see I have this gorgeous pink silky fabric, and this is another one of those Fabric Land vintage finish satin fabrics, and I got it on sale for I think it was $2 a meter at my local Fabric Land. So I got four meters and it's just this gorgeous kind of shiny pink color. And I'm not sure what I wanna use this for yet, but the next time I wanna make a silky dress, I'm definitely going to choose this. It's such a bold color that I think I'll have to make sure to choose a good fabric pairing for it pretty carefully, but love this one. All right, next up in here, this is another piece that is actually um, a clothing item. This is a shirt that I thrifted recently. Sometimes I thrift things that I think I could transform. And this shirt, it's kind of an odd cut. It was an 80s shirt. It used to have these huge shoulder pads in it. It just fits a little bit oddly. So I wanted to transform this into something new. So sometimes I'll just throw those thrift pieces right in my fabric stash so I don't forget about them. But I absolutely love this fabric. So hopefully I can think of something that I would like to use it for soon. But it doesn't belong in this section, obviously, because it's such a dark color, so I'll put it where it belongs. All right, next up in this section, these are really hard to fold, so I kind of just let them be. These are both power mesh fabrics that I want to use to make some active wear. So I have this pretty dark berry color and I have this lighter pinky color. And I have these two activewear fabrics to go with them. So I thought it would be fun to experiment with making some contrast activewear maybe that features both these colors and some mesh. This one is from a seller on Etsy and this one I purchased um, in store at GK Fashion Fabrics which is local to me here in Toronto. So I really like both of these fabrics and the next time I want to make some activewear I definitely will be using these fabrics for sure. All right, next up, this is kind of a remnant. It's the cotton poplin fabric I used to make my pink cutout dress last summer. I've got a little bit of it left enough to maybe make a top out of, so I'm going to hold on to it because I really loved working with this fabric. It's a beautiful color and I love the finish of this cotton poplin. This is a beautiful fabric I got from Fabricland last summer. I believe it's some sort of viscose fabric. It's very, very sheer. It's lightweight and breezy. So this is destined to become a summer dress for sure. I have a pattern in mind for this, so I think that's what I'm going to use this fabric for this summer. Just waiting for the weather to warm up before I start embarking on some of these more warm weather projects. It's still early February here in Toronto, so it's gonna be cold for a little while. So this is a scrap. I think I'm gonna move this to my scrap bin. This was the lining I used for my Heather blazer. Um, I don't adore this color to be quite frank. I'm not sure what I would use this for other than to maybe make a color blocked project or scraps for something else. So I think I'm gonna move this to my scrap bin. It's just, it's not my favorite. Okay, along with other fabrics that aren't my favorite, I purchased this um, crinkle cotton off a of seller on Etsy. It's um, fairly heavy weight, but it's 100% cotton. I was thinking of using this to make a Gilbert top. It's not my favorite fabric, but I haven't given up hope on it. It could even be a fun one to try over dyeing. I think the colors are just a bit more muted than I had expected. If the pinks and greens were a bit more poppy and bright, I think I would like this a lot more. Once again, this is another remnant. It is a remnant of a fabric I really love, but there's not a lot here, and I think this would be best served in my scrap bin so that I know I have it when I go to um, use my scraps to make something. So this is going to the scrap bin, but it is a an Indian block printed cotton that I used to make a dress a couple years ago when I started sewing. And I just adore these Indian block printed cottons. They're gorgeous, they're breathable, they're so unique. 
So really love these fabrics. Okay, just to save us some time, these are both some linen remnants. This is a lighter peach and this is kind of a, a darker pinky color. I think I used these for my color block tank top a couple years ago. Once again, there's not a whole lot here, but hanging on to them in case I need them for another project. This is a scrap of a remnant fabric from the 1930s, which is really, really special. I had bought it with a specific project in mind, a 1930s butterfly blouse, but there's really not a lot here. So what I might end up using it for is to make some um, bias tape for my 1930s butterfly blouse project or pairing it with another 1930s um, fabric to make a pattern from the 30s. So this is really special to me. I just haven't found the right project for it yet, so I'll hang on to it for now. And last one in this section is yet again another block printed cotton. This one I have to say is slightly lower quality in my opinion. You can see the print isn't super clear and consistent. I bought this to make my Afghan dress from Folkwear Patterns and it served its purpose in that, but I do have you know, quite a bit left, so not quite sure what I would use this one for, but it might make cute summer accessories like home decor or maybe like a tote bag or for quilt quilting or something like that. So I'll hang on to it for that. Okay, taking it down to the ground level here. This is kind of my catch-all um, categories at the bottom. Like I have more blues and greens down here. These sections are kind of serving as a catch-all for other blue and green fabrics that I haven't found a home for anywhere else. So first up, I have this gorgeous check printed wool I got from a fabric swap in Toronto. I wanted to make this either into kind of a waistcoat pattern or a jacket, and I still do. I love this fabric. I was just not up for another coat pattern this winter because last winter I made my green coat, and then late summer I made my heather blazer. In the fall, I made a floral printed jacket. So I was just kind of done with coat sewing, but gonna hold on to this for next winter and really, really happy to have this one. So this is another linen from fabricstore.com. Sometimes I keep the tags on just to remember what color. So this is the color Meadow and it's one of their lighter weight ones and it's and I wanna use this to make a summer dress for sure. I've got a good amount of it. So very happy about that. This is a white linen cotton bit blend from fabricstore.com. It's really kind of thick and sturdy. I'm hoping I can use this to make a lightweight, breathable summer blouse. And I think having the cotton linen blend will be really special. And I have some beautiful white lace trim that I'm thinking of pairing with this to make kind of a special and romantic floral summer blouse. All right, here's yet another Indian block printed cotton fabric. Whenever I have the urge to buy more block printed cotton, I have to remind myself that I have lots in my stash still. So. This one is beautiful. It's got yellow and blue flowers on a white background. It's one of my favorites I bought. I'm hoping to use this this year to make a summery dress. This is a tablecloth I thrifted. I was originally going to use this to make a dress, but honestly, this tablecloth is such good quality. It's in such good condition. I might just save it and use it as a tablecloth because I really love it for that purpose. So I think I'm gonna pull it out of my fabric collection. And last one here is this white bull denim. Again, I got this when I purchased all my bull denim a couple of years ago. Really excited to use this white. Um, so I'm happy to have it in my stash for, you know, when the time comes that I wanna make something out of bull denim again, I'll have this in my stash. Okay, last section here. This is a remnant. It's a polyester crepe suiting fabric. I was going to use this fabric to make a pair of wide leg pants. It was actually a bit of a fail. I cut out my pants and then when I went to sew the pant legs together, I realized that I had printed out the PDF pattern incorrectly. One of the pant legs wasn't to scale and they were completely different lengths. So it's a complete fail, which is a shame because I love this fabric, but right now seeing this fabric is just making me upset. So I'm going to take it out of my stash. And this last little bit, I think I'm going to just put in my scrap bin. This is another Blackbird Fabrics Bamboo Rib Knit in this sage green color. I love this one. I think it's destined to become a summer top, maybe with a v-neck or a tank top, something like that. This is a gorgeous cotton poplin fabric with a little bit of stretch. I got it from Mood Fabrics a few years ago. I've had a little bit of trouble figuring out what I would like with this fabric. This is a Blackbird Fabric Swim fabric. It's in this nice dark green color. 
And kind of to go with it, I also have this swim fabric from Blackbird Fabrics in this beautiful black and green kind of zigzaggy design. So really love both of these and I want to try my hand at making some swimwear this summer. This is some beautiful green and white striped linen, again from Blackbird Fabrics. This was kind of a splurge for me last year. This is going to be made up into a Zadie jumpsuit this year, I'm pretty sure, either that or another cut of jumpsuit. But I love this for spring summer, it's a gorgeous fabric and I think it will be something that's really wearable as well. We have one more scrap here of this Blackbird Fabrics matte activewear knit. I'm holding on to this. Again, I think this could be used to make another t-shirt or tank top or leggings to work out in. So I really like these fabrics. This green linen is a remnant from when I made my two-piece green linen set for Italy uh, two summers ago. Really lightweight, love the color. This is some of the nicest quality linen I've ever owned. So going to hold on to this to maybe make something out of the rest of these scraps. So this is a green lining fabric I got when I was making my coat and just there's only a little bit of this left but I'll hold on to it in case I need a lining fabric in the future. This is my last bold denim I have in my stash. This is a foresty green color and it's probably my favorite color out of the bold denims I have left right now. So once I find the right pattern for this I'm really excited to use it. I definitely think this could be a really cool pair of pants. Okay guys so it's the next day and we're in a different area of my apartment than you typically see because after I wrapped up my filming yesterday I realized I have a whole lot more fabrics that I actually store in this armoire. We just have this armoire in our living room. It's kind of become a catch-all for my craft supplies. As you can see I do keep some plants up here. Don't judge these guys. They're herbs from last summer. I'm going to replant some fresh herbs in them when spring rolls around but for now they're just sitting there waiting to have new things planted in them. I thought it would be worth showing you guys what's in this armoire in terms of my fabrics. So in here I tend to store fabrics that I'm really not interested in using in the foreseeable future. They're usually not for projects that are for me, they might be for gifts for other people. And I also store really bulky fabrics in here, but quite honestly I never go in here. Usually we have our couch right here, so I only go in here when I have to. So this is going to be as much of a surprise for me <laughs> as it will be for you guys. And I'm hoping I can do a little bit of a declutter today too, so let's just jump in and I'll show you what I have in here. Okay, on the top shelf here, things aren't looking as bad as I expected. So first thing you can see is I have a whole lot more of this fabric that I used to make my um, floral fall coat last fall, like a lot more, and it's really bulky. So I'm storing it here. I do really like it, but I don't really know what I'm going to do with it next. This area is also what I like to call my project graveyard. So if I have projects that I started working on and they're just not working out for whatever reason, I usually throw them in here to forget about them. Now, do I always take them out? That's another question, but let's see what's in here. A couple of these projects I'm actually going to pull out now to work on for spring summer and I don't want to spoil them so I'm just going to do that really quickly but I'm not going to tell you guys much about what's going on. I do also have some larger trims and things in here. This is the brown bias tape I use for my fall floral jacket and I have some piping that I use when I make sweatpants as gifts for family members. Okay, I'm pulling this one out first. I honestly have no idea what this is. Oh, I remember. I purchased this to be a lining fabric for a white dress that ended up being a project fail. So I still have this lining fabric. I had forgotten about it. So I might actually move this over to my main uh, fabric storage so I don't forget about it. So next up, I have some kind of scraps or remnants of some rib knits and some jersey fabrics. Most of these are too small to really make anything substantial from but I could maybe make a tank top or something. So this is something I could think about getting out this year, but I also hang on to them in case I need the ribbing for things like sweatpants or sweatshirts or things like that. And you can always play around with contrast ribbing, so I do think it's helpful to kind of hold on to all of these. Right in the back here, you can see I have some wool batting that I used when I made my quilted coat. So I'm just hanging on to the rest of it for now in case I need it in the future. Okay, so in this shelf you can see there's more of the same kind of happening. I'm going to take a minute to organize this a little bit better. So here's some more scraps and remnants from this project. I'm actually going to throw these up here. Here I have some waffle 
um, weave linen fabric. I got this from fabricstore.com and I use this to make my kitchen cloth. So for wiping countertops and cleaning dishes, I really like the waffle weave fabric. And I think I should actually go ahead and make some more. I mean, I have so much of this fabric left, so I'll just hang on to this for now, but I really like this fabric for kitchen cloths. This is an upholstery fabric. I actually bought this when I first started sewing and I didn't know anything about fabrics and I wanted to make a gathered dress out of it, but it's way too heavy to use to make a dress. I've hung on to it all this time in case I wanted to use it for home decor, but realistically I don't know if I ever will. So I think I'll hang on to it for a little bit longer, but if I haven't used it by the end of this year, then I'm just going to declutter it. So next I have kind of remnants or leftovers of the Blackbird Fabrics Bamboo Rib Knits, and I really love these fabrics. To be honest, I had forgotten these were in here, but these will definitely become tank tops. I wear a lot of tank tops in the spring and summer, and it's a great way to use up small pieces of knit fabric, so going to kind of remember I have these to make some tank tops. So next up I have two colors of this um, soft bamboo fleece fabric. Again, this is from Blackbird Fabrics. And on one side it's got this really nice brushed soft color. And on the other side it looks like sweatshirt material. It's pretty lightweight. The colors are gorgeous. And I've made lots of gifts using these fabrics. It makes the comfiest sweatpants ever. It makes really nice sweaters. It's super soft, it's got a little bit of stretch. It's honestly just the perfect fabric for me making loungewear. So I actually think I wanna use both of these colors to make like a color blocked sweater for someone in my life for their birthday. So hanging on to this. And here I've got two colors of a more traditional type of fleece. It's thicker, the inside has that um, typical fleece texture to it. I believe it's a cotton poly blend. And if you just want a nice kind of standard fleece, this is a great way to go. Um, this would make a nice kind of heavier weight sweater. If you were going to use this to make sweatpants, they'd end up being pretty thick, which could be great depending on, you know, how cold it gets where you live or what you're looking for. But again, I hang on to fabrics like this because I think they make great fabrics to make gifts out of. If you, I feel like you can always make someone loungewear and they'll really like it. So hanging on to this for now. Oh, these are from the Fabric Club, by the way. Oh, and then this is a third, this is a third color of that same fabric I was just showing you, the traditional fleece. And I've got a lot of it here, so this could easily become a sweater as a gift for someone. Okay, last but not least is this bottom shelf. And this is actually, again, where I store fabrics that I'm using to make gifts for people. And this is where I store my children's or my baby fabric. So this is what I use when I make gifts for people in my life who've just had a baby or a small child or something like that. This is kind of my stash of my baby fabrics. But yeah, I just think it's nice to have a stack of baby fabrics on hand. I just feel like lots of people in my life are having babies and it's great to be able to make them some nice homemade gifts using cute fabrics like that. Okay guys, so I really hope you enjoyed seeing my 2024 fabric collection. I've definitely built up a little bit of a fabric stash over the last couple years I've been sewing, so I am pretty motivated this year to try to work my way through my stash. If I'm wanting to sew a new project, I'm trying to look at the fabric I already have and then think of the right project that would kind of go with that fabric just to, to start working my way through some of this. Now, I do have a couple fabrics I got recently that I'm purposely not showing you in this video because they're going to be featured in some upcoming videos very soon, so I do hope you can forgive me for that. But other than that, you guys just saw information about all the fabrics I own. I do have a scrap bin, but I didn't think it would be very fun to go through my scrap bin. If you like this video today, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And if you like videos like this, please do subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you around. And stay tuned for more sewing-related content coming up very soon. Okay, guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye.